Hi everyone, welcome to Minimoc focusing on the monitoring of urban areas with remote sensing. I'm Gohar Hazarian and for the next one hour we will look at the current challenges of urban monitoring and together we will uh, have an overview of different data and methods that can be used for urban monitoring based on remote sensing. Uh, the short overview section will be followed by three hands-on user cases where we will use different data sets for urban monitoring using Google Earth Engine. So let's start. In general, urbanization is changing our planet. About half of the population uh, lives currently in cities and this number is expected to increase. Um, so here we can already see some examples how remote sensing data can capture the changes in urban areas. But besides this visual uh, observation, there is a need for quantification and more information regarding not only the changes, but also the implications and impacts of these changes. Another phenomenon which is observed in urban areas is urban heat island. This is a phenomenon when the temperature in cities is significantly higher, which can have an impact on different domains such as uh, public health, uh, energy consumption, and uh, local climate and weather. With the increasing urbanization, other challenges uh, such as um, the provision of infrastructure, sanitation, electricity also increases. And these challenges in general are embedded in different sustainable development goals, but uh, especially in sustainable development goal 11, which focuses on making cities and human settlements uh, inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Remote sensing plays an essential role in urban monitoring. Often it is the only reliable source of data which provides information at, um, at large, over large areas and providing the data not only for one point uh, in time, but uh, it provides repeated information which allows us to not only use it for mapping the urban extent and composition, but move forward and map and quantify the urban changes, identify the informal settlement, and also use the data for assessing phenomena such as urban heat island based on thermal data. Uh, although uh, different data sets coming from different sensor systems provides uh, different information, they can be used complementary. Here we can see examples of data uh, coming from Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-1 data. On the left hand side we can see multi-temporal composite based on multispectral Sentinel-2 data and on the right hand side we can see the multi-temporal composite over the same area uh, based on uh, radar data. So here we can see that although the uh, images look different they give complementary information and can be used together or independently, for example, for mapping and identifying urban areas and um, because of the uh, can be acquired uh, at multiple st time steps, also looking at the changes happening in the urban areas. So besides multispectral and radar data, other information coming from remote sensing can be used for urban monitoring. For example, uh, land surface temperature, which can be derived from thermal data, can be used to assess the thermal conditions in urban areas, as well as monitor the urban heat island impact and look at the changes of warming and cooling areas during the long time span. Another source of information can be the visible nightlight data, which can be used uh, not only for identifying the urban areas, but also moving forward with the analysis of economic activities and energy consumption. So all these data sets can be used independently or in a synergistic ways to map and monitor urban areas. But besides this raw data that can be processed by us, uh, they are also available ready to use data sets describing different aspects of uh, urban areas. But the first one here is the global urban footprint, which is based on remotely sensed data sets uh, coming from Terrasar X and Tandem X or uh, radar data. And it provides a, a data set on urban cover globally at around 10 meter spatial resolution. Another data set which provides global data is the global human settlement layer, 
uh, which again uses satellite imagery as well as some other additional information to construct the data set and provides data on, uh, for example, on build-up areas over long time span. Here we can see an example of the um, increase in the build-up areas uh, visualized for the time uh, from 1970s till 2014. Later, we will use this data set for, um, in our practical session to look at the uh, build-up uh, cover changes. So coming back to the sustainable development goals, here we could already see that uh, remote sensing can provide information regarding the um, areas and uh, urban areas and the changes happening in these urban areas. And coupled with some other information, it can contribute to the monitoring of different indicators, such as SDG indicator um, indicators for. Uh, Goal 11 on urban population living in slums and also sustainable urbanization rates. For example, the land consumption rate can be derived from remote sensing and coupled with information about population changes. The, uh, it can be checked if the urbanization rates are sustainable or no. With this, I would like to end the overview session and later we will continue with uh, practical sessions with three user cases.